Welcome to Pond. My name is Mitch Stein. I'm the co-founder, CEO, and chief impact officer. We want to make tech work for good. So we're highlighting and uplifting the critical parts of the impact technology ecosystem through human conversations with the leaders and shapers of the industry. Let's jump in. Meet Emily Rasmussen, a lifelong mover and shaker starting in professional dance, then leadership roles in the arts, and now an impact startup. She knows the beauty of people moving together with a shared mission and is delivering that magic to groups of friends and strangers that form giving circles around their biggest passions on Grapevine. Hi, I'm Emily Rasmussen, co-founder and CEO of Grapevine. We help groups and giving circles to pull their donations and give together. And Emily, what moved you to found a company like this that was serving the nonprofit sector? So I've been really inspired by the, the social impact um, sector or just uh, that as an inspiration for my work for a long time. So I used to work in microfinance um, and got really involved in that sector and just was passionate about the community-based um, impact model that microfinance um, you know, was, was spreading across the, the globe. And so it did a lot of work there ultimately um, decided that I was excited about technology um, in that sector and Kiva taking off and Kickstarter launching. And so um, my particular area of interest in the social impact side of things started to shift a bit more toward how can we use technology and tools to amplify impact that people are looking to create. Um, and so that's where I started exploring that. And ultimately that led me uh, to Grapevine. Awesome. And how, uh, you know, as Grapevine has evolved, how has it changed most significantly from your original vision to what you're doing now? We started with this concept of collaboration, collaboration around giving. Um, but initially we had this idea that we could connect donors with experts and that would help unlock more giving. It would help donors feel more confident in their giving. And so we explored that for a while. And, and we realized that while people appreciated that connection and that kind of gut check that this is a, an organization that someone else um, recommends, has vetted in some way, that really wasn't a key motivator to galvanize giving. Um, so that was a really key insight for us. And at that time, we started hearing more from the early users on our platform that they wanted to collaborate with others. Um, and giving circles at that point actually started reaching out to us. And so that was a huge uh, opening point for us in terms of rethinking what we were trying to accomplish and how. And uh, we really started working collaboratively with groups to build this, this donor um, collaboration model where expertise does still have a role in many cases, but it's not the key driver. You know, there's a lot of different ways to give out there, obviously. How do you feel like Grapevine is most differentiated from your competitors? I think it's really this group model, right? This isn't about an individual donor with their individual donor account and doing their thing, and then maybe sharing that on social, which yes, there's some social element there, but it's an afterthought. This is really community first, uh, it's about people coming together in community, pooling their funds first, actually, and then collaborating around the decision of where to send that money. So people have that agency. So there's much more connected to the impact and um, the, the opportunity of those funds. One of our most commonly used models on the platform is where 100 people come together and everyone pitches in $100, and then they have a $10,000 check to give away. So it's really powerful to, to feel like you have some ownership and some some um, you know, control over where that money, that $10,000 is going. And that's the kind of impact that people can really see, um, whether it's that new initiative launching or that park that was, um, you know, that was just built or something added onto it. And so it's a really powerful way for people to feel connected to community and to impact. Sure, and I know you've done so much work around the space personally, but is there a cause or organization or event or something that's most memorable or been uh, most touching for you in your memory? <laughs> that's tough. Um, I think one thing that I'll just highlight I, this last year in particular has been obviously a difficult year with COVID and, um, and there's been a lot of need. And so there's been a lot of really incredible, incredible work. Um, I think one group that responded very quickly and I've been really inspired to see what they've been able to do is a giving circle called Liberated Capital, which is actually um, run by Edgar Villanueva, who's an author and, and grant maker. Um, 
and they are supporting Native American communities. And so they've been able to, uh, to move just an incredible amount of money um, to hundreds of nonprofits across the country in response to COVID. And often these are very small, even fiscally sponsored initiatives where that money is really going a long way. Um, so I think that's been you know, really exciting to see them. And then just generally, I would say in this last year, really inspired to see so many new groups popping up to support communities um, in response to events or just being really motivated to come together and make a difference. We have uh, giving circles that have um, come together around different cause areas. One group is Black Trans Lives Thrive. Another group is the Buy Visibility Fund. Um, there are others around the environment. And so it's really exciting to see these communities coming together um, for the first time to make a difference for these causes. Yeah, you're really empowering people to have an outlet for you know something they feel passionate about. And it's sometimes tough to feel like there's something targeted for you to do. So it's awesome. I think that's right. Uh, and I think people like to connect with other people, right? Yeah. Who care about those things. So they're coming together in community. They're building those really great connections um, and, and able to make more of a difference together. And so that deepens those connections and also expands that impact potential. Yeah, especially now more than ever as <laughs> we're all quarantined. Um, so I know you've, you've had a really successful year. So as you think about your growth and, and people coming on board, what are kind of the cultural principles at Grapevine that you feel like are most important to the organization? And how does that translate to the product that you deliver? You know, I think as a platform, we're, we're so fortunate that to support such a broad uh, variety of types of, of people and perspectives and, and work. And so we really seek to um, you know, to be open to that and, and bring that into our team and our community um, there as well. You know, beyond that, we have some key things that some key kind of uh, guiding factors, I would say, around the culture as we're thinking about building our team and, and our organization. And that's to be open. Openness, you know, I think for us means transparency and um, just um, open to new ideas and the diversity um, topic I mentioned. Intentional is another one. You know, this is, we wanna be intentional with everything that we're doing and, and really purposeful with the experience that we're creating and, and the team that we're building and the tools that we're, we're providing to people. And then one other one that's, that um, we talk about is, is spirited. So we want to make sure that people do bring their perspectives and that there's, there's you know, spirited both in terms of a fun and community and, and bringing your whole self to work and all of that, but but also being open to having those, those conversations and sharing diverse perspectives and you know, managing that, um, whatever that might bring up. So. so I know we've been talking a lot about giving circles and giving a lot of examples, but maybe just for anyone who's not totally familiar, could you just give us the 101 on exactly how a giving circle works and why you feel it's so important for the nonprofit sector? Yeah, so giving circle quite simply is a group of people come together to pool their donations and then decide together where to give the total amount. And then typically they'll repeat that. So one very common model I, I mentioned a moment ago, but it's a hundred people come together. Everyone pitches in a hundred dollars, right? Now we have a $10,000 check to give away. We then let the members nominate different nonprofits. Ultimately there's a vote. Whoever wins the vote gets that $10,000 check. And then we repeat, repeat that process uh, the following quarter. So that happens on a quarterly cycle. We have many groups though that are on um, monthly cycles, some that are, are on annual cycles. Uh, there are different uh, contribution amounts. So the $100 a quarter is a very popular one, but we see 10 and $20 a month often. Um, we have one group that is $10,000 per member per year. So, you know, this model really does work for a broad variety of donor types, um, economic brackets and, and backgrounds. Um, I think it's really important for the nonprofit sector because this is a movement. So giving circles have tripled in the last 10 years. They're expected to more than double again in the next few and reach 350,000 donors in the US alone. Um, and also these donors are high, high potential donors for nonprofits. On average, giving circle members give more and give more often than the average donor. And so for you to connect with a donor in a giving circle is a high potential opportunity, not only for you to potentially receive funding from that group, right? But also just to get in front of this community of, of donors to learn about you. We find that often people who participate in giving circles um, are very philanthropically active, civically engaged, volunteer more. 
Um, and so these are people that, you know, you can uh, cultivate a relationship with and, and hope to bring, you know, into your world um, in a bigger way down the line. Um, and I think, you know, the one other thing that I'll say about this, and maybe we're, we're going to get there too, but beyond those existing giving circles and looking to connect with those and those, those donors, really thinking about the model itself and how the model, what, what it is about this model that's engaging donors and how you as an organization can um, adopt and adapt this model to engage more donors um, for your organization. That's something that we're, we're starting to see more and more nonprofits do and really showing us what's possible there. It's really exciting. Yeah, I guess that was a question I had was, is there a good way for a nonprofit, aside from just being aligned to a cause that people care about, is there a good way for an organization to get more engaged with giving circles on your platform? Yes, so um, great question. First of all, we, we do encourage uh, nonprofits to share more information with us on them and we can fill out their profile in a more robust way. So that's kind of the lowest hanging fruit um, for organizations. Um, but the second thing is we're going to be launching a global giving circle directory in collaboration with Philanthropy Together, which is the new global giving circle initiative uh, launched by the Gates Foundation. So we're their platform partner. and. Uh, and that is going to be a searchable directory where nonprofits will be able to go and search for giving circles in their communities or that are focused on different cause areas um, and how to connect with them in order to try and make those connections um, with, with the group and ultimately um, you know, potentially the donors within them. So look out for that. That's launching in March of this year. So not, not ready just yet. And then the other thing is thinking about yeah, how to use this model for your own group. And so, you know, expect more from us soon on sharing um, other lessons learned and, and case studies of how nonprofits are using giving circles. Um, but just a couple of examples of things that I think have been really exciting to see. There's, for example, um, a, a nonprofit that is has been thinking about how do I, I have this big volunteer base. How do I now, you know, transition those volunteers into donors? What's like the next lowest hanging fruit? These are really engaged people, they care, but getting them to become a donor is a big step. And so they're starting to use giving circles to enable that, where they get those volunteers to pull in friends, this becomes an activity that they can do to contribute, but then they can start that giving circle in a low dollar amount, and they can invite their other friends to um, all contribute at the same amount and then take turns nominating nonprofits. So that the nonprofit ultimately gets the pooled funds at least one month that year, let's say, but in addition gets access to all of these other donors um, and gets to start to build that relationship, right? Yeah. So that's one model. We've also seen uh, uh, some nonprofits using this in a more um, event-driven way. So um, encouraging very active donors um, to put together a bit of a giving circle event. So it can be a one-time thing. Uh, and that donor gets to be the host, right? And how fun, I get to host this big event. We're going to invite all these people to participate. Um, we're going to tee up three different projects that the nonprofit um, is, is working on for the group to then learn about and then ultimately vote on where to send the pool funds that night. So it's a very social, fun, low, you know, um, low hurdle thing because it's one time. That, that you get that, that lead donor or volunteer to really take that active role and get to be the kind of star of the show um, and then just help facilitate more education about the nonprofit's work and connection to, to new donors. Is that always donor led or do you ever have nonprofits that kind of like make the pitch in that setting? Great question. So we do have nonprofits that make the pitch. In fact, I was on a Giving Circle event yesterday where the nonprofits um, each came and pitched their organization. Um, and that is a fun way to think about it too, especially when you're in this event-driven mode, right? You can have the nonprofit come and everyone gets three to five minutes to pitch um, their organization. If it's if the, the circle is to support one organization only, then that nonprofit, um, we've seen sometimes they'll have whoever the program officer is for each of the programs, right? Come in and get to pitch, or they might select one person who pitches the three. Um, you know, it kind of depends on who you have on your team and, and how you want to, um, yeah, how you want to put it together. But certainly that's, that's another model. 
So I know that in 2020, you had an, an awesome year, if I've got the numbers right, two and a half million for a thousand organizations, 4,000 people in 300 circles, which is great. That obviously produces a lot of really interesting data. Was there any insight um, from that that you can share that was most interesting about how, when, or why people supported certain causes? Maybe not terribly surprising. Giving does tend to be event driven, right? So certainly right after COVID hit, we saw some spikes in April and May, a lot of COVID related um, gifts. Um, we did also see some spikes in, in June um, in response to uh, BLM protests and race, racial justice issues that were, were front and center in, in June and July. And so there was definitely a spike in giving and also new giving circles being set up um, in response to some of those issues. Um, so that, that is there, I think, for us and for many others. I think what we're excited about that's a bit unique with, with us too is that because the giving circle model um, lends itself toward this recurring giving and ongoing community is that while some of that activity was event driven, what we've seen is some of those groups are continuing to give on a monthly or quarterly basis to support those causes and issues. So for us, that's really exciting. You know, there again, there was a bit of a spike, but a lot of that um, has continued on through these groups that are have made that commitment now to give back to those issues um, in an ongoing way. That's fascinating. I would love to see. I would love to see more like more data around that because I would imagine the giving circles' ability to retain that ongoing donor relative to a one-off donation straight to an organization, I have to imagine is a massive difference. It is. 70% yeah. of the donations on our platform in December were recurring donations. Wow. Zero. Yeah. And each one is, each one's an individual decision. It's not like a set it and forget it. That's no, it's a, it's a set it. So you're setting it and then you don't have to go and do another donation, but, but it's a, you know, typically then corresponds with some kind of engagement around identifying right. a nonprofit and participating, you know, it's not that, yeah, you've forgotten that this is coming out. And, <laughs> yeah. And I think the other thing that to keep in mind, I mean, not only is the recurring nature really exciting about this, but also that, that engagement level, right. And giving those donors some kind of agency inspires larger gifts. And so we see a lot of gifts. I mean, I think our average is around $200 per donation. Right. And especially for an online platform where I think typically in, for example, crowdfunding, you probably know this better than me, but it's what, 50 or $60 maybe on average. Um, and so I think what's really nice about this model is it can be very effective for that mass affluent donor that, you know, that, that kind of mid, middle market, I would say, of your, your fundraising or development pipeline that's really hard to figure out how to cultivate and retain. Because mm -hmm. of course you have your major gifts officer in that operation and, and you, you know, it's the white glove treatment. That's great, that works. Then you have on the other side, you know, these one-off donations, crowdfunding contributions, things like that, more transactional, um, low-key membership programs. But what about the middle, right? And I think the middle is where we often see, for example, next-gen donors and some of these other segments where nonprofits are trying to gain more traction and figure out how to, how to make connection. Um, I, I do see organizations trying different things like um, junior boards, right? Young patrons councils, things like that to try and engage those groups, for example. And this is a really great way to engage those groups in a much more cost-effective way for you. A lot of the like needing to manage and engage those groups, you don't need to do because the community does it, right? Mm -hmm. They really, that helps pull it together. Um, sure. For, for users of the site, donors and participants, um, what do you find sets apart the most uh, successful giving circles and what advice do you give to people that want to grow the participants or dollars raised? I think the, the key to a successful giving circle, number one is an engaged and active giving circle leader. So it doesn't have to be singular. We do often see that giving circles will have two or three people working together, but you know, it's like every group needs to have that galvanizer. The person is going to organize the event and make sure that everyone gets the the calendar invite or whatever it is, you need that person who can just kind of galvanize the good intentions and the, you know, the desire of the, the other members. Um, and so that's really key. And so because of that, a big part of our work is, is making that person's job much easier. 
um, so that the administrative overhead and all of that stuff is and reporting anything involved is really simple for them. Um, as far as helping giving circles to grow, this is actually a really exciting area of growth for us as as a platform. What we found is the vast majority of giving circles want to grow more members, more impact, right? Um, organically, they're, they're not they're they're decent at it, but it's very word of mouth, I would say. So they're not great at using other tools to help raise awareness and, and grow groups. Um, so I do think though, just word of mouth is very powerful in this sector. So we do always recommend to giving circle leaders that that's the first place you go, you know, those immediate networks, pulling people in. And then of course, asking your members to each pull more people in. And so the growth really naturally happens that way. Um, but then there are other great things that you can do, whether it's it's local press and just raising awareness of the impact that you're having, the work that you're doing that can inspire others to join. Um, and then just trying to make sure your circle is, is um, presented in front of other donors where they might discover it. And that's where we're excited about some of the work around this directory that I mentioned in particular, because we're building an embeddable version of that that will live on many of these major donor platforms, um, like the Philanthropy Together Gates Foundation Initiative site um, and many others. And so, um, you know, we want to really help raise awareness and, and get more eyeballs and, um, and hopefully new members for these giving circles through some of those, those collaborations. And uh, I guess one last tip, if you have it on the nonprofit side, um, just in terms of aside from starting their own giving circles or being listed on the site, like what are the types, what do good organizations do that attracts the type of donors on Grapevine? I know you mentioned they're like an ideal donor, they're likely to give more on a more recurring basis, spend more time with you, bring friends along. That's an amazing donor to have. What about the organizations that get the most support sets them apart from others? Just anecdotally, what I've seen are organizations that really, um, that connect with the donors. For example, we see people who are passionate about um, a particular organization working at an organization, but also just passionate about the broader field end up becoming members of Giving Circles. So it's relationship building, right? I mean, it's kind of fundraising 101. I think that's, that's part of it. Um, and then otherwise, I think if, if not joining a giving circle yourself, um, having advocates within the giving circle is another really great way to, to um, get that exposure and the opportunity, right? So often these giving circles, like I said, have members nominate. So if you are connected to a giving circle member, you know, they're, they can be a really key part of your ability to get in front of this giving circle and pitch to them. And then finally, I would say, because you have a very short period of time to introduce a big group of people to what you're doing, just your story. Um, you know, a lot of these groups, they'll give you two or three minutes to pitch. And so you've got to get your whole story in there and know your numbers and um, your impact and also have the emotional piece. So nonprofits are great at this. They know their story, but being able to communicate that effectively and in a brief period of time, um, I think is, is really important. Something I'd add that... I think is really interesting is your the way you're able to prove out the need for nonprofits within a certain cause area to work together and not be competitive against each other. Mm -hmm. Cause I've definitely heard or the merits of doing so because I've heard from a lot of people through the work we're doing like, oh, well, I wouldn't wanna share that with all the orgs in my area because I don't want them to know like what we got or like take our donors. And there's sort of this subtle competition yeah. um, and it's like, you're growing the pie by informing people about your cause area. And it's not just about you as an individual organization. There's a lot bigger benefit to work together with others around your cause. That's right. Yeah, I love that point. And you know, it reminds me of a, a study that the Gates Foundation did or, or a poll that they took where they estimated that that donors would give more than double what they're giving now if they just if, if there were better ways for them to give, if there were other ways um, other ways for us to think about them giving, right? I think if we think about expanding the pie instead of just trying to take a larger slice of what's there, it will open up whole new opportunities for our organization as well as, as others. Um, and I think it, thinking about it in this way, it puts you in a really great light in front of donors too. I think donors really want the social and collaboration. And we haven't talked about this here, but women in particular. So 
about 70% of Giving Circle members are women, right? And so women are driving this movement. They, they are motivated by different things and think about their giving um, in different ways than men typically, which is much more collaborative and community-based. And women we know now control 40% of assets globally, right? They're becoming a bigger and bigger economic force and opportunity um, for nonprofits. And so they really value this collaboration and community both within the donor community, but also seeing that collaboration across organizations. And so I think it really casts you in a great light in front of these, these donors to, to participate in this way. Yeah, I love that, that stat. And it seems like so important for you to be leading that company to appreciate that value and be focused on those things, you know, because you obviously understand it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it's it's been a it's been really exciting to feel like we're able to help support this community that wants to do so much more that hasn't really had great support to do it, but has been out there pioneering their own models regardless. Awesome. Well, I think I snuck in a few more than 10 questions there, but thank you so much for uh, for sharing all this awesome info and appreciate you taking the time. Of course. Thank you for having me, Mitch. Thanks for coming by. Be sure to visit joinpond.com and jump in when you're ready.